right now the upside risk in this this market is exceptionally high one of the reasons why the markets are incredibly tight from a physical perspective now 2008 was a financial crisis this is a molecule crisis we're out of everything i don't care if it's oil gas coal copper alley you name it we're out of it um and it's you know the backwardation in this market is an indication of just how different this market structure is from 2008. 2008 the curve was going up by the back end dragging it up it was in contango at some points in time which tells you it was paper financial buying on the back end as opposed to outright shortages this curve is as kind of super backwardated and many of these commodities are super backwardated which is you know textbook shortages in fact you know when Keynes created you know, the idea of backwardation in the 1930s. This was what he had in mind, and we have not seen such types of backwardation. I've been doing this 30 years, and I've never seen markets like this. This is textbook shortages. Two days ago, Goldman Sachs' Jeff Curry pounded the table on escalating commodity values versus diminished supply levels. Bloomberg followed up his sound bites yesterday, writing the following. Goldman Sachs Group Commodities Guru says he's never seen markets this bullish before. These are the measures that explain what he was talking about. There are more commodities futures contracts trading in backwardation, a market structure that indicates scarcity, than at any point since at least 1997. That's a total of 19 out of 28 raw materials encompassing everything from energy to grains, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Commodities trade in backwardation, where near-term prices are stronger than those further out when they are in short supply. On Monday, Goldman analyst Jeff Curry said the world was in the midst of a, quote, molecular crisis. We're out of everything. I don't care if it's oil, gas, coal, copper, aluminum, you name it, we're out of it, Curry said on a Bloomberg TV interview on Monday. Futures curves are pricing in shortages, the likes of which he's not seen in 30 years, he added. The strength comes amid a red-hot market for raw materials that has seen the Bloomberg Commodities Spot Index surge to fresh highs already this year. In energy markets, strong demand for oil and gas has outpaced the ability for supply to keep pace. Metals prices have been also buoyed by supply shortages across the globe, particularly on consumption, as consumption grows amid a push toward cleaner energies. In agriculture, crop output has been capped by bad weather, with dryness curbing soybean prospects across South America. At the heart of all this is the energy transition that's going to impact commodities for the foreseeable future, said Daniel Hines, a senior strategist at Australia and New Zealand Banking Group Limited. Spare capacity is relatively low, and it just can't make up for the potential risk to supply. Of course, anyone with a functioning memory in even this 2014 U.S. Senate hearing illustrates the powerful commodity desks that banks like Goldman Sachs often hold outsized control in our nation's physical commodity markets. For instance, between 2010 and 2013, it was alleged that Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and Glencore inflated aluminum prices in the USA by creating artificial supply shortages at their aluminum warehouses, costing U.S. consumers an estimated $5 billion in escalated costs over that time frame. Since the bottoming of many base and precious metal values in early 2020, many common base metals have been climbing valuation walls, frustrating many shorter-term thinking bullion bulls as nearly every metal on this chart aside from lead has outperformed silver and gold spot prices since the start of 2020. If I were to pick you know, the, the green metals, um, and there's six green metals, copper, aluminum, nickel, silver, lithium, and cobalt, the ones we would focus on in terms of the green metals would be copper and aluminum. And, and aluminum, we like to call it the climate change paradox. You need it to solve um, global warming um, but it creates the greatest emissions of all the commodities, which makes it extremely tight right now. Our tar- Aluminum is the third most common element in the Earth's crust. And of course, underinvestment in the commodity sector over the last decade plus and ESG mandates have certainly also led to this decade's building commodity super cycle. But by perhaps constricting available industrial supplies, alleged artificially higher prices could most certainly be brought about. But most long-term bullion bulls are not merely betting on a building commodity supercycle, but also a likely store of value monetary crisis to come. Expecting to one day again see something akin to the 1980 portion of this chart. Hello there, on behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson with a quick SD Bullion market update. 
Before we go further, please smash the like button so other sound money stackers can also see this content. And be sure to subscribe to our SD Bullion channel so you can get our latest market coverages and also a chance at winning incredible bullion giveaways like this one. Raise your hand if you like free stuff. We were going to give away a free tube of the brand new 2022 Silver Eagle coins. Then we said, nah, make it 25 tubes. SD Boolean is at it again with the Silver Eagle Monster Box sweepstakes. How many coins are in a monster box? Let's just say one lucky participant is going to be showing off their best celebratory dance moves with 500 shiny new silver bird friends. So head over to sdboolean.com backslash sweepstakes for your chance to win. Click the link below for your chance to win, and good luck to all of you out there who enter our contest. We started this video off with Goldman Sachs' Jeff Curry pounding the table on worsening commodity shortages. And Jeff Curry is the same guy who a year ago on CNBC stated that in the silver market, the presumably dominant COMEX derivative shorts are the ETFs, insinuating at the time that retail investment demand for silver bullion could have little effect on prices. The explosion and rapid expansion in fiat currency supplies ongoing stand to increasingly drive more secular inflation to come, and more and more silver bulls like myself think that owning prudent positions in value-suppressed gold and silver now, and for the long haul, not later, makes prudent common sense. Just look at how poorly precious metals have been relatively valued since the last time the fiat monetary system got taken to the woodshed in early 1980. Again, bullion bulls like myself were not merely betting on a building commodity supercycle, but also a structural store value crisis to come. Instead of waiting for large, often manipulative commodity desk head gurus to one day tell the masses to buy silver and gold, likely when it gets relatively fair valued higher and prohibitively more expensive, potentially very hard to find, why not get a prudent position acquired now while it's still relatively cheap versus other asset classes and common base metals? That's all for today's video. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content.